We've heard of you. You are the son of the Atreides Duke, and of Jessica, the... Could he be the one? That is the most awkward thing to say right in front of someone. Welcome back to a very special episode of Saturday Afternoon Gaming. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we are trying something on the Sega CD. This is a system that we have yet to play. Of course, being a Sega game, it opens with Sonic and the traditional Sega kind of tonality. I guess I didn't say it, which is kind of weird, actually, because I remember on actual Sega just cartridge games, they would say Sega, but here they just gave us a tone, but we're playing a game on the Sega CD, which the whole thing with the Sega CD is you have full motion videos and awesome CD soundtracks and stuff. Like, look at this. This this would have blown your mind back in the day if you owned a Sega Genesis and somebody slammed this baby in. You'd be like, whoa, what are we playing, man? Chill it out. I can't handle the intensity that is Cryo and Virgin Interactive. What have they teamed up to present to me? It's blowing my mind. They're really milking this title screen. When are they going to announce the game? No, wait, I don't want to know. No, wait, I don't want to know. No, wait, I don't want to know. What is it? What is it? What is it? Okay, you guys probably know from the... I'm just... I'm hamming it up here. The title of the video was Dune, of course. And this, of course, is very obviously, time. is Dune. We're playing Dune on the Sega CD. Dune is an adventure slash RTS game that would eventually lead to the development of Dune 2, which was a much better known game, actually. Um, I had heard whispers of Dune uh, being an adventure game, but I never really knew what it was. This woman is, is creeping me out. She's staring right in my face. She's giving us a bit of backstory here, but I can fill you, you uh, beautiful people in on the backstory. We don't need her. So yes, this is an adventure Kind of like a dungeon crawlery adventure RTS game. It kind of combined a lot of genres here. First things first, let's just go ahead and check our options in our mixer panel here. Make sure everything looks and sounds good. We're going to go ahead and change the music to game relative, which means the song playing will be appropriate for where we are in the game. And we will leave... Let's turn these onto balloons. I find it a little easier to, uh, to see... Uh, what characters are saying and this is it so we get to walk around using our little uh, arrow panel here so we're on a balcony now just gazing out into the ma the majesty of Arrakis so okay uh, full disclosure all I know about Dune comes from the Dune 2 video game but Dune is basically about a, a desert planet called Arrakis where there are giant sandworms which are awesome and there are there's spice and this spice, if people eat it, it allows them to, like, see the future and live super long and do all sorts of things. I think they need it to be able to plot uh, jump coordinates through space. So you need it for space travel. So it's a very, very, uh, you know, sought-after commodity. And there are various noble houses in the distant, distant future fighting over. So kind of Game of thrones uh kind of back backdrop there. I tried to watch the movie. Uh, at various times when I was growing up, but I just I never got into it. I don't know. I, I kind of feel like Dune is ripe for remake and modernization um, and maybe present it in a way that uh, the modern audiences could really get into. Not not to say that, you know, the, the classic is unwatchable, just, you know, for my own taste, I just couldn't get into it. Anyway, uh, let's check out the Dune map here. So this game does combine some real-time strategy elements. I don't know how much of this I'm going to be able to actually do. What is this? Siege, Cartag, Timon. Might as well not even be in English because I have no idea what that means. Siege, Card. Oh, Siege, Cartag, Tuik, Harg, Tuik. Okay, I have no idea what any of this stuff means. And there's a palace. I've just messed up the map there. There's two little like demons here arguing over a globe. See what's going on with the demons. Um, exit globe. See results. Save game. What are we looking at here? My God, there's like a fat guy holding a ball on the left there, and there's like a skinny guy holding a ball on there. Oh wait, these are the two houses. So I guess the plot for this game is you are you are Paul Atreides of House Atreides, and the Harkonnens are also on Dune, but they're not your kind of people. You don't really like them, so you want to get them off Dune as quick as you can. Let's go ahead and talk to our father, Duke Leto Trades, and get this shindig on the road. 
I am the Duke Leto Atreides, your father. Ah, nice to meet you, Pa. <laughs> uh, let's see, what are our options here? Come with me. Okay, first, how about talk to me? I just My want to son. hear you talk. We must mine the spice as soon as possible, or the Emperor will recall us from Dune. All right, so we got a mission here. Now, the Sega CD version actually had voice acting for all, uh, every single spoken line of dialogue in this game, which is totally awesome. This game came out on DOS and Amiga before the Sega CD, but the Sega CD has full audio for all dialogue, and it has full motion videos, which no other version has all of this stuff combined. So the Sega CD version is kind of the definitive version of this game, in case you're wondering. Um, does he have anything else to say to me? Three troops of Fremen around the palace. And I've sent Gurney Halleck to meet them. He's not returned yet. Go there and see what's keeping Gurney. Alrighty. You have anything else to say? No. <laughs> Wait, I tried to talk to him. And he just he was just like, forget it. Hey, how about come with no. me? No, I have to stay here. What about what? I have to stay. No. No. <laughs> that's that's really interesting. I've never seen in an adventure game, or maybe I have and I can't remember. The, uh, the option to just say what and have a character repeat themselves. That's actually really convenient. Uh, you need that in more adventure games because sometimes you're zoning now, you're not really paying attention. All right, here's my sweet bedroom. Let's look into the mirror, see what's going on. Oh yeah, look at that. Get a, get a good look, ladies. Let it sink in. This is, this is the Atreides babe you're gonna be looking through the eyes of over the next, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes. He's uh, he's single and he's looking to mingle. Look away from the mirror, man. You know what? When I stare into the mirror, I don't get the option to save or load my game. Okay, we'll look away from the mirror. Funny how the mixer panel is like it's just constantly an option right here. Should be like a settings menu or something. Feels weird to be there. Um, what do we got going on here? This is a book um, on various topics like spice. And the Duke said to Paul, my son, we must mine the spice as soon as possible or the Emperor... Wait, this is literally just what my dad said to me like five seconds ago. What? Uh, okay. On Dune, the desert covers. Okay, well this one, this one is a little more, you know, uh, there's stuff going on. Okay, watch the little intro video. I assume that's just a transcript of the intro video. So it's everything I know about spice apparently is written down biblically in sort of biblical phrases but it's literally just what my dad said um man i i want somebody to write a bible styled book about my life like could somebody do that for me just like literally that could just be a quote in the book i don't know um so who we got here we got uh mom jessica i'm your mother jessica the duke has sent gurney halleck to Carthag tuic go outside Take an Orny and fly there. Hurry up, my son. I sense danger. Take an Orny. You sense danger. Are you psychic or is it just like typical mom worry? Oh, does, doesn't have anything else to say to me. I'm okay, let's. I'm, I'm going to take a shot at this. Come with me. I don't think I need to be at your side. Well, I don't care what you think. I don't think I need okay. to be at so your two, side. So really the only option when you meet characters is talk to me. So <laughs> when I meet people... Paul Atreides has a very set, set ways set. He has a very set set of ways to talk to people. When he greets people, he either says "talk to me" or he says "come with me" or he says "what." Those are the only three things he says. What's this red dot, by the way? Okay, so this is a map. We've checked out two of those rooms. Let's see what else we got going on. Then don't mind me. These look like Australian guards. They kind of have like Australian caps on. Like they're they're out hunting uh, kangaroos and stuff. Okay, nothing much going on there. Just an elaborate hallway. Nothing going on here. All right, so we'll go out to the Orny. For those of you who don't know, the Orny is short for Ornithopter, which basically is a flying device. Take an Ornithopter. How about take the Ornithopter that's sitting there? Now, of course, we can't talk about this game without talking about the awesomeness of the music. Um, this game was recommended to me by, uh, by a, a fan on Twitter, by the way. So uh, thank you, sir. Uh, Matt, I believe, for recommending it. Oh, God, I hope I got the name right. Um, oh, crap. Which way was I supposed to go? I totally forgot. Can I check my book? 
Even my book will tell me. The Spice, the Fremen, nope. Okay, it's Kartag Tuik. They couldn't have made these names any more... Whoops! No, no! <laughs> okay, I already, I already selected the wrong spot. I don't know what's going to happen when I get there. They may slaughter me like a pig because I'm not supposed to be there. But anyway, this game was recommended to me by a fan on Twitter. I did check it out, and I completely agreed with him that the graphics, the sound, the look, the feel of this game is awesome. The music, oddly enough, reminds me of Dune 2, uh, the sequel. Well, not really a sequel, but like follow-up game by Westwood Studios it was a full-on real-time strategy there was no adventure game component to it and it got me wondering if the people who made the music for this game made the music for the sequel or if the you know the sequel just was like oh we like the musical style of the original so let's go ahead and use that boy this is like a really elaborate video we can oh we can change our destination oh thank god okay because we were going to the wrong place we want Carthag Tuick all right well that works that's convenient uh i'm kind of i'm kind of digging this like uh this video here this is clearly just like some you know wmv file that they compiled in like the early 90s uh they they took probably took them months to animate this and they were like man it's gonna blow people's minds when they see it be like flying this, i wonder if this was as amazing to people when it came out is like these days slapping on an Oculus Rift is. Because when we slap on Oculus Rift, we're like, whoa, we feel like we're in the game. I wonder if when people saw this, they were like, whoa, it feels like we're in the game. We're like flying and dodging around mountains. Okay, I'm just going to skip to the destination because we, we've been suitably impressed by their, uh, uh, you know, comings and goings of their video here. So I guess we'll go into the cave. I'm kind of, I'd be afraid to wander off into the desert. So I'm gonna walk towards the cave. And here we go, ooh, look at this. Gurney Halleck and a Fremen. Fremen, of course, are the natives of Dune. Let's talk to Gurney Halleck. I don't know who he is, but I've been told to find him. Gurney Halleck, I've served the Atreides for a long time. Tell me something, Gurney. If you serve us for so long, why are you hanging out in a weird cave with a weird dude? Is this your off day? Am I interrupting something? I've just come into contact with the Fremen. The Fremen have always lived in the sands of Dune. They live in sieges so well hidden that no one knows exactly how many there are. Okay. Thanks for the exposition. I've tried to convince them to work for us. You try, Paul. They may trust you. All right, dude. This is like the creepiest man ever. He's winking at me. If you look at his right eye, he, he, okay, he blinks it occasionally. Look, he just winked. I swear he just winked. Was that not a wink? I think he's coming on to us, guys. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to bother asking him to come with us because I don't want him to say yes. We've heard of you. You are the son of the Atreides Duke and of Jessica, the... Could he be the one? That is the most awkward thing to say right in front of someone. To, like, literally break mid-sentence and, like, whisper, Could he be the one? It's the, You're creeping me out, dude. The one one are the original inhabitants of Dune. We've adapted our way of life to the desert. I hope so. If you live on a desert planet and you didn't do that, you wouldn't live. Uh. Okay, how about work for me? Yes, I agree to let my troops work for you. Oh, that, that was shockingly easy. And it's funny how the, the order was work for me, not come with me. Um... Yes, I agree to let my troops work. So what is really a useless option? It's really just if you haven't been paying attention. Okay, let's give some orders to your troops. Um, oh, sweet. We are awaiting your orders. Interesting. All right, well, uh, I don't know what we can do with these guys. Let's figure it out. How about, okay, specialize in army, spice, or ecology. Let's go with spice, because I feel like that's where you got to start in these games. We'll try to learn. How do you how how have you adapted to desert living but have no idea about how spice works? I don't know, but no more orders. <laughs> I literally just showed up in his cave and I was like, D "Dude, you work for me now. Tell your men they specialize in spice." I feel like the Joker. Tell your men they work for me now. If he if he said no, I would have him dragged away and asked him to think how loyal a hungry dog would really be 
That's the kind of Atreides I am, a no-nonsense scumbag. It would be best for us to visit the three sieges together, and then return to the palace and inform the Duke. All right, man. You can come with me, but seriously, you better have something in your eye. He did it again! He winked! You creepy old man. Okay. Okay, Paul, I'm going with you. Let's uh, let's just say goodbye to our Fremen chief here, buddy. Um, I'm doing spice mining. Good. That's definitely what I told you to do. And I guess there's nothing else for me to do. Okay, well, tell you what, man. Good luck with all that spice mining. We're going to take the spice, get insane profits off of it, and uh, things will trickle down to you one, one day, someday, possibly. But just keep mining that spice. Don't ask many questions. This whole economic system works a lot better when you guys aren't asking questions. All right, let's carry on to the next place. So what do we got? Desert southwards. Let's hit up these other places. How about Timon? Timon, Timon is nice and close. We're going to Timon next. Let's see what we got going on there. <laughs> I like how there's not even an animation when that thing takes off. It's literally just it it moves up the screen. It doesn't, it, you know, its wings don't flap or anything. So an ornithopter is kind of like a bird plane. Like its wings do flap. Um, and if you ever see it in like Dune 2 or something, maybe you'll uh, get a better sense of it. But okay, we got now this awesome desert animation again. We're going to go ahead and skip it and pop ourselves into this cave. I'm tempted to wander into the desert just to look around, but I have a feeling it would not end well. Oh, there's, there's no one here. Is there anything this way? Nope. <gasps> just desert. Hold on. Let's be brave. Let's just take a few steps into the desert. Okay, I'm, I'm too afraid to keep going. That is cool, though, that you can just wander around into the desert. Huh. This game has... I mean, it definitely is an adventure game, and so it's kind of on rails to some degree. But it definitely has some degree of freedom. A little bit more than I was expecting, actually, which is kind of cool. Kind of cool. Kind of nice to not feel like you're boxed in in these games like look that's the animation the wing grows and it literally just lifts off the sprite doesn't animate at all my god the cursor the little bird-faced cursor i used to select my options is more animated than my ornithopter was my orny as they call it which sounds just sounds kind of weird to say it okay we found we found a dude a free man hanging out in a cave this, this man is, saw you coming from the uh, other his name is Green Suit McCobbles, and McCobbles has been waiting a long time to wear anything but green, but for some reason everyone keeps buying him green things for his birthday. All right, McCobbles, what do you got going on? Uh, he has nothing to say. How about, okay, McCobbles, tell your men they work for me yes, now. I agree to let my troops work for you. I like how the Freemen are just, are just agreeing for absolutely no reason. I will take it, though. McGobbles, you and your men, what are we going to have you guys do? We have now enslaved the McGoggles gang. I keep saying McCoggles and McGoggles. I don't even know what I've actually named him. It's kind of an ambiguous. I wouldn't know how to spell his name if a gun was to my head. All right. Uh, select troop uh, occupation. And I'm going more spice. We know a little about spice mining. Oh, and these guys even know a little about spice mining. So... Bingo. Bingo bango. Um, let's see what's going on with this dude now. Did you notice no, all the freemen we met have blue eyes? We meet have oh. blue eyes. Totally blue. No whites in them. It's linked to saturation of the blood with spice. I keep wanting to read these dialogue things because I'm in the habit of doing that for my other games, but this is full voice acting, so I'm trying to just let the game speak for itself. Um... The Freemen seem to be organized into tribes or troops. Yes, that's a very obvious fact I have also noticed. Let's go and tell the Duke that we have two troops working for us. Alright, well, sounds good. Before we go back to the palace, I want to check out that empty cave one more time. Oh wait, not check. I'm going to take the ornithopter. Select destination. And Timon. I seriously want to know what's going on in this cave. I feel like maybe we missed something. They wouldn't have three caves and have one be totally empty. Unless it was like something that we have to do later in the game. 
Let's just take a peek. Oh, there's a dude here now. He was hiding before. He looks like a like a handlebar mustache biker. This is blue suit, blue suit Daniels. We saw you coming from the other siege. Oh, did ya? Well, tell me something. I can feel something in you, but I wonder if you will be able to penetrate the secrets of this planet. You feel something in me and wonder if I can penetrate things. Hmm. Um, well, Freeman, we saw you coming from the how about you work for me? I'm not quite sure that you're able to appreciate our skills yet. All right, dude. I'll tell you what. Let me, uh, let me impress you with some secret penetration, and uh, I'll be back later to recruit you. All right. So I guess we've kind of done all the damage we can do here. We are like how we're the good guys, and we've literally enslaved two tribes of Fremen. They're not frat anymore. Now they're slavemen. They're slavmen. Because they're missing an E. Fremen. It's free without an E. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm making a very terrible language joke. Um, alright. Well, I think Ma and Pa are going to be proud. Let's go see what they have to say. Oh, we got a new fella here. We got Duncan Idaho. Specializes in the manufacture and preservation of potatoes. I'm Duncan Idaho. The Duke asked me to supervise the production of spice. Oh, close actually. Dude, you got a funky haircut going on there. Like, I've never seen anyone style it quite the way you did. You, it was a bold choice. Not a good one, but a bold one. Well, for the moment I haven't much to do. I hope that we'll be able to extract large quantities of spice very soon. Yep, uh, me too. If you really want to know about the properties of spice, ask your mother, Jessica. So you specialize in spice, and if I really want to know about it, I should just ask somebody else? I can't know. I have some work. Okay. All right, buddy. All right. All right. Let's go talk to her mom. The spice is mined from the sand of dune. The spice prolongs life and extends consciousness. It's used by the guild navigators to travel through space. Yeah, see, it like messes up your consciousness and they use it to plot like hyperspace jumps in the, the context of the world of Dune. I wonder what the proximity of so much spice will do to you, Paul. You seem completely unconcerned about that, by the way. Um, seeing how spice like messes up people's consciousness, you're just kind of like, hmm, I wonder, I wonder what weird mutation you're going to develop being exposed to it. Well, I'm not going outside. Come with me. I don't think I need to be at your All right, all right. Uh, well, let's let's see what Dad has to say. Hopefully, something a little more. Oh wait, this way. A little more uh, useful than that. Duke Leto a tree. Freeman have a special garment which they call a still suit. Wearing this, they can stay in the desert without losing body fluid. How did they develop that? I haven't seen any manufacturing capabilities. They live in caves. That's damn impressive if they built that purely from a cave. Cave tech. It would be advantageous for us to have some of these still suits. I want you and Gurney to go and find some of these suits for us. So, you're talking like straight up robbery? Are we buying them? What's, what's, what kind of negotiating powers do I have here? Am I just supposed to like take what I want? And remember, avoid wandering in the desert. You won't go very far without a still suit. All right. Fair enough. Let's talk to Gurney, see what he has to say. Good old Gurney. Oh, yes. I always yes, trust yes. him. Let me remember. And that's it. The Freeman in the siege where we met told me about a still suit maker. Garble, garble, garble at the bottom there. I wonder what happened there. All right, so we have to go back to where we first met him, which was Siege Tuick or something. Let's just go have a quick look at our, our our face in the mirror. You know, Paul Trades here. He's nothing if not a little narcissistic. He's like, "Hey, right, we'll get going. I just want to have a have a have a Paul minute here. See, uh, look at some of that beautiful Atreides. Let me go ahead and save our game. Write a little log there. He's kind of looking in the mirror like he's judging himself. Like he's shifty eye. He doesn't really know." happening now apparently the longer you play this game the bluer his eyes will get 
which is kind of cool. Oh, and there's a day-night cycle. See to the left of my cursor right now? We're on day three. I think it's nighttime? So there's a day-night cycle in this game too, which is pretty cool. Maybe that's why that, uh, that first Fremen wasn't available when we went by, because we went by like, I don't know, during the day or something, or during the night, and he was sleeping. Might have to pay attention to that. Yeah, look, it's night! This is pretty cool, man. All right, and this is my first time playing this game. Two things I can say about it so far. One is it does feel like a fairly open game as far as adventure games go, even though the plot seems kind of on rails. Um, but two, another thing that's kind of cool about it is that it's a very light adventure game. Like I haven't felt like I've hit a point where I'm stuck or anything like that. Um, I do have some notes here kind of guiding me so that I don't get stuck in this playthrough and we're, we're gonna move forward, you know um, So uh, I do I do have that resource that I can uh, use But I haven't really had to use it all that much compared to some other adventure games, you know, like Sierra adventure games and stuff I definitely would not get very far at all if I did not have a guide beside me at all times This game I feel like I could do pretty well on my own actually or at least get started I'm sure it gets more complicated so it kind of feels like a Telltale adventure game. One thing that was really nice about Telltale adventure games is when they revitalized the adventure game genre, they made adventure games a little less cryptic and a little less to the point where you could get stuck and have no idea how to move forward. Uh, go this way. Another thing that's awesome about this game is the controls. On the Sega CD, I thought, you know, this game would be ideal for a mouse and point and click, but I'm using a D-pad and it's shockingly efficient at uh, moving through the menus and, and clicking on things. In fact, it feels faster than the mouse, if I'm being honest. I thought you looked interested in my still suit. A little more interested in what's under the still suit. If you catch my drift, buddy, I oh, just kidding. Um, I'm interested in the still suit. Where can I get one? Yes, I know a still suit maker. You will find him if you fly eastward in your orny. It's not very far, but... Be sure to fly with someone. Sieges are well hidden and not easy to find. Okay, so, I mean, do you want to come? Because that would be convenient. Anything else you got to say? We're doing spice mining. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, dude. Um, keep sending me that spice and I'll keep using it for my own purposes and making money and stuff. I've yet to encounter a single Harkonnen, which are the bad guys of this game. You figure at some point the Harkonnens are going to show up, and all of a sudden this game is going to shift. Things are going to get far more aggressive. So, he said eastwards, right? We're going to go east. Just generally head east. Could have given me slightly more specific directions, like GPS coordinates would have been nice, or... I don't know, something. Oh, well, we can, like, turn left or right. Interesting. Um, can we talk to the other guy here? Nothing. We can click on him, but it doesn't do anything. Okay, so I guess we just gotta hope that we see this thing. A siege. I guess a siege is like a hidden cave? I don't know. I don't... I, I hope this is pretty apparent when we see what it is we're supposed to be looking for. Up. Oh! It looks like a siege there on the left. There we go. Uh, go towards it. I was going to say, I guess it looks like we can just sit back and let the melodies of dune and the, the rolling hillsides of sand serenade us. But before we could, we saw the siege. So, okay. I gotta say, this, this part too is like... I wouldn't say soothing, but like, it's uh, it's well done. It's well done for, for its era. There we go. And we landed at the siege. Let's go ahead. And me and Gurney are like best friends now. It's like kind of turning into a buddy cop movie. Oh, this looks like far more elaborate cave system than I've seen before. Okay, keep going. Further into the beast. Show me where you make your clothes. There's a Freeman here. Let's see what, what's going on with him. Hey, it's, uh, it's this dude. It's Mc, McGobbles or whatever. I forget what I call them already. Terrible memory when I make stuff up on the you fly. You know about the principles of our still suits. It's good that you're so keen to learn our ways. 
Oh, I'm nothing if not keen, my friend. So, uh, what's the secret? A still suit is basically a high efficiency filter. Perspiration passes through the first layer and is gathered in the second. Salt is separated and the reclaimed water circulates to catch pockets from which you can drink through a tube at your neck. So, you drink your own sweat? Is what you're telling me? Breathing and walking provide the pumping action. Here are some steel suits for both of you, and I'll send some to your palace as well. Wow, they're... These are like the most agreeable desert-dwelling people ever. I, I... What are you getting out of this, dude? Like, <laughs> you're just literally doing my, my bidding, no matter what I ask of you. Uh, work for me. Wait, wait! I haven't finished yet. Oh, okay, sorry. You know, oh, we'll get to that, don't worry. You'll work for me, but he has more stuff to give and or tell me. I know of two more sieges in the vicinity whose leaders would be more than interested in meeting you, Paul Atreides. Travel north and east from here. Okay, now work for me. Yes, I agree to let my troops... Oh my god, this is... Man, this is how cults get started. Hey, by the way, anyone watching this, you want to work for me? Uh, send me an email if you do, and you can start mining spice for me right away. Trust me, it's a great gig. You can also send me some of your clothes if you have still suits, or I'll just take any. In fact, I'll take any of your possessions. Money, possessions, whatever you want to send me. Whatever you want to send me. I'll do it because I'm a good leader. Like Paul, uh, Paul Trades here. Oh, that was a friend in chief. That was the boss. He made time for us. Thanks, dude. Let's see if there's anything more in our little book Bible here. The Fremen. What's going on here? Paul first encountered the Fremen in a siege near the palace. Fremen are the first inhabitants of Dune. They lived in sieges hidden in the desert. Their eyes were blue. What were they hiding from? I wonder if they were the only inhabitants. Totally blue, no whites in them due to the saturation of the spices. Interesting. Again, I want somebody write, to write the Bible of Jay and just have it be all about me. Because that would be awesome. No, no, wait. We'd rather you didn't visit our siege. There's nothing here for you to see. Mm-hmm. Heard that one before. What are you hiding from me? What kind of monstrous super weapon do you have back there? Um, <laughs> I wonder what's, what's, what's going on down there. Nothing. Don't go down there. That's Yeah, I've used that line before. There's definitely trouble. Okay. Uh, what did he say? North and east of here? Wait, actually, I f just realized his men said they would work for me. I didn't give him any orders. What is having an army of slave people without giving them orders? Um, we're going to give you some sweet orders, buddy. My troop is settled. Oh. Okay. Troop. How about spice? I've seen a spice harvester around. There isn't anyone using it. It would be nice to have it. Wait, there's literally just a spice harvester just hanging around? Here are the characteristics of my troop. Seven, you have 1,700 men. I don't even have that many viewers. I'm building a cult in this game of like thousands of people faster than I can get people to watch videos of me just playing a video game. It's hilarious. Okay, motivation is only 30% though. What are your guys' motivations, huh? What are your motivations as my loyal fans, I wonder? What are you guys at, 50%? Come on, you gotta be better than these slobs. I guess use the this and this. Wait, is that my ornithopter? Don't use my ornithopter. <laughs> what is that? I don't even know. I want to give it to you, but if it's my ornithopter, I'll be screwed. No more ornies? Um, the characteristics of my troop. Okay, fine, you know what? Use the ornithopter too. Thanks for giving me your orny. Oh no, wait! Have a look at the characteristics. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I need that ornithopter back. <laughs> okay, I don't know if giving him the or ornithopter the would take away my only form of transport, but I just assume it might. And I don't want to take that risk, because I need that to go places. I mean, I guess I could have given it to him and then gone out here and seen if I still had it or something, but that's a lot of work. Alright. Oh, they're actually on the map. Okay. Well, let's start with Tuik. Is my ornithopter, like, kind of 
driving itself or is there a pilot? Am I flying? Because it asked me for a destination. I hear robot voice confirm. And then we just kind of fly. I don't know if my guy knows how to fly or if the, the, or, the orny of just doing the flying. Let's use the proper terminology here, the orny. All right, we know the drill. This guy is Johnny Comover. We've heard about Yes, you have heard about me. Basically, this is my MO guy. I'm going to talk to you for a bit, and then my words are going to compel you to work for me, and you guys are going to swear allegiance and also come to my Sunday church service. It's awesome. Uh, yes, I agree to let my troops work. Ugh, it's easy. It's easy. Why, why, did I, why am I not running a cult? Clearly, I should be running a cult. Let's give these guys some orders. Guess what you're going to be specializing in? My Spice. Is the area has to be prospected for oh. Spice. Oh, what? We start mining. How come none of the other areas did? Do you Have guys... Okay, so that troops. ornithopter totally is mine because it's here too. Oh, his men are only 25% motivated. I think... Oh, and there's 2,300 of them? Tell you what. Beat 300 to death... And see how motivated the remaining 2,000 are. That will either make them 100% motivating or lead to a straight up mutiny. And either way, I'm going to be long away from here when you do it. So th th those are my standing orders. Um, okay, how do we... How do I make... Okay, okay. It's a very peculiar job. Okay. So it has to be prospected, and you guys don't know how to do it. So what good are you to me? Tell you what, man. Beat 600 of your men to death. Because I'm pissed off now. You just wasted you wasted Paul Atreides' time. And Paul Atreides has like 10,000 people following him. And he does not want to hear excuses. Alright, fine. So where where was I? Right there. I was at Tuick. So Taber, I think, is the other one. Wish there was an easier way to see where you had been. Man, I wish it was this easy to recruit people. You can't even get Twitter followers this easy. Um, what, what's the easiest type of followers to get? You know, if you legitimately did try to start a call, I bet it would be really hard. I don't even know how people do it. Not that, like, I think that's a good thing, or people should be doing that. I mean, cults are, like, by their nature, very exploitative of people. So here is this Paul Atreides we've heard about. You look like a friend of mine. How about you work for me? Yes, I agree to let my troops work for you. Man, like, none of them even put up an argument. It's not even, like, a discussion. I'm just like, you work for me now. My troop is awaiting your orders. Have a look at the characteristics. You're pretty motivated group. I don't know. Specialize in spice? The area has to be uh, before we start who can do prospecting? We've been asked to do spice mining, but can't start it right now. Okay. Um. Wait. How do I. What, what does this do? Oh. Interesting. We can look at our map. Okay. Hey, why is that middle? Oh, that middle group. That's the only group that agreed, that disagreed, and did not want to work for me. That one guy. He did not subscribe to the Paul Atreides YouTube channel. Maybe can I order my other guys to, like go in there and slaughter him brutally? We don't want to have any dissenters, basically. All right. You know what? Maybe Gurney has some ideas about this prospecting. I suspect the existence of a troop of prospectors. Well, there has to be one. Why do you think so? I'm convinced such a troop is nearby, probably in one of these already prospected sieges. What does that mean? Um. Oh, maybe we have to go back to one of the places that we've already been to find a prospector? Is that it? Okay. Um, where should we go? Select destination on map. Alright, I did use a little bit of uh, psychic cheating here on the old interwebs to figure out that we should probably go here to find our prospecting gang. Now, you know, the usage of walkthroughs occasionally in adventure games like this to keep the walk the playthroughs going, 
Um, you know, some people may occasionally look down on that, but in the context of this game, Paul Atreides gradually becomes psychic, and he has latent psychic powers. So I'm chalking uh, his his remarkably accurate intuition to go to Siege Timon up to his psychic powers and nothing more. In fact, they should even tell you where to go. All right, Fremen dude. Uh, we've heard rumors that you might call on our services prospecting. Oh, what? Oh, this is the this is the one guy who didn't want to join us. And he's a prospector. All right. Well, now that you know I need a prospector, before he didn't join me for, like, no good reason. Good to see that our and now he wants to join me. He just wanted to feel appreciated. He didn't want me to, like, have him join him and, like, not really know what his specialty was. All right, dude. Guess what? Now you guys are going to get orders. He's the prospector chief. My troop is awaiting you. Let's see. 400 men, 40% motivation. Why is, why is motivation so low? Um, okay, specialize in... wait. How do I... My troop is awaiting your orders. How do I make them do something here? I guess we specialize in spice? You're unbeatable in spice prospecting. Here, I have something you may find interesting. Okay, tell me. Here, map take this of map of the planet. You just happen to have a map of the whole planet handy? Okay. You can update this map as we send back information to you. I accept. Okay. Show me three sieges where you want me to go now. Okay. So these three are good. So we need this one. Then we need this one. We need this one. You go ahead and make a reverse four there. All right. Hey, look, he's he's leaving. <laughs> Man, these are some obedient locals. I like how the premise of this is like, you know, the local Fremen uh, have, have lived on Dune uh, by themselves, and like now the outsiders are here. But they seem like highly agreeable. Like, uh, it seems like the Harkonnen would have an easy time dealing with them too. You just show up and you're like, all right, you guys work for me. And they're like, okay, I guess. Like completely unfazed. All right. Well, not only, I feel like we've, we've, we've become like a desert. We've conquered through diplomacy. I was going to say a desert conqueror, but we're really, we've gone the Picard route of diplomacy. Although we haven't really had to do much diplomacy at all. Just literally being like, hey, you want to work for me? And they're like, yep. All right, let's see what's going on back in the palace. We have our army of followers. I feel like now if my dad or my mom gives me guff, because I'm kind of becoming an exalted cult leader, I'm, I've kind of moved beyond seeking their approval. I have like 10,000 desert dwelling people harvesting spice for me and worshiping me for some reason. And I'm going to take advantage of that. I'm going to go full on corrupt cult leader here. Um, Look, the steel suits have been stored here. Very good, creepy old man. Why you talk to me? Okay, but I think you're wrong. I, I still may be able to help you. I didn't mean to do that. Um, you can totally come with me, dude. It's rather different here from the sieges we've been to, isn't it? Come with me. Okay, Paul. Okay, whatever. <laughs> so let's see. Go up here. Let's see what's going on. Let's check in with good old Duncan Idaho. I must congratulate you on finding this prospecting troop. We're now well on the way, Paul. What do you mean, we? You didn't do anything. Here are our current stocks of spice. Wow. You're holding up an iPad. You are an endless source of useful information, my friend. Okay. And is 410 kilograms good? I don't even know. So what's going on with uh, Duke Leto? I got the still suits. Good work, Paul. Don't forget to have a look at the map to see if your troops are working well. Oh, they're working. Trust me, I had one of the sieges just beat 300 people to death. Just to just to instill a bit of fear in them. I don't know if he actually did that order. He carried it out, but Paul, I told him to do it. As you know, we haven't been here at the palace long. And this old building may still hold many secrets. Our enemies were here recently, and we've already found some traps. Traps? 
Well, your mother Jessica has this special talent for, well, sounding rooms and finding secret doors. Go with her and search the palace. What? My mother has a, a, a special talent for finding secret doors. That is, I've never heard a father say that to his son before. Remember that now our most important task is to achieve good spice production. All right. Well, I mean, you tell me all the things. You tell me all the the like random desert dwelling peoples that you have convinced to work for us today, and then we'll compare how many I've gotten me to work for today. And then we'll see who's doing what to help out. Let's see what's going on over here. Nothing. I wonder what would happen if I'd given my ornithopter to one of those sieges. Would I just have to walk through the desert? Um, what's my mom doing in my room? Get out, leave my stuff alone, mom. What the proximity of so much spice will do to you, Paul. You keep saying that as if you know it's going to do something bad. We both will try to examine the few rooms we can access. Go ahead. I'm following you. All right. So I guess we just walk around. I mean, there's clearly more rooms in this palace. I mean, I could have told my dad there's secret rooms. There's there's two rooms on the left and three on the right that we have not been into. So we're just gonna go down and presume that, is this one of the rooms? No, down one more. I mean, this seems like there look to be obvious doors in the left and right that would go places. But I guess we can't go anywhere wait I can feel something what do you mean you can feel something how do you sense secret doors what kind of weird weird ass powers do you have I think there's a hidden door on the left yes let's have a look bizarre all right well, let's do it oh okay what what is this you know who would know? Creepy old man. He knows a lot of things. I'm exactly hospitable. He just winked at me again. He's winking. He just he starts started this conversation off with a couple of winks. Um Paul, I gave you more than an education. It was more of a kind of special training. What the hell are you talking I about? I expect that here on this very special planet, you'll discover that you have many special powers. On this special planet, you'll discover all the special powers you have. Okay. I can't tell you more for the moment, but each time you experience something strange or special, come and tell me. I'll give you an explanation. How about you give me the explanation now? Why are you talking in riddles? Okay, whatever. Uh, wait, we can go up too? Let's do it. Oh, now what do we got going on here? All right, creepy old man, now what? I really don't understand much of this kind of technology. Yeah, old people are never really good that, with, that good with technology. I know it befuddles and frustrates you, my friend. Okay. It looks like a communication room used to send and receive long-distance messages. I'm going to try to open this door on the right. The... is it like an obvious door? How did we not know about this room before? A communication room. Let's all gather here. Jessica really has extraordinary faculties, doesn't she? He's like so impressed. She found a room. I mean, I guess that's impressive. I don't know. Thank you, Leto. But let me tell you, this is an exhausting exercise. What, finding rooms really takes it out of you, does it? As we are almost all gathered here, I would like to congratulate Paul for what he's done since we arrived here on Dune. He's giving me kind of smarmy looks here. He has visited six sieges, and now these troops of Fremen are working for us. That's a good start, isn't it, Jessica? He just winked at me. Everybody's winking at me. I think everybody likes me, guys. I'm pleased to notice that Paul now has a rising charisma among the Fremen. 18 Charisma! That's my nickname. Paul, I'm very proud of you. All of my hopes are set on you. Oh, that's a lot of pressure, dude. 
Oh, and that's it. Well, I think that is probably as good a place as any to end this little uh, escapade today. Of course, we were just sort of messing around with this game as we typically do on a Saturday. I know for these longer adventure games, sometimes I try to complete them, sometimes I just kind of check them out. And I know for this one, there's a lot more to do. Um, and so for today, we're going to call it a day. We may come back to this one day, but uh, probably not. I don't know. I mean, if there's overwhelming demand, maybe I will finish this game and keep playing it, but um, as is my ammo, probably we'll be playing a different game next time around. So I'm going to go ahead and save it just in case. But guys, let's just stare into the beautiful face of this gorgeous, gorgeous noble, Paul Atreides. Guys, what have we learned here today? I think we have learned that when it comes to... Uh, when it comes to seducing the people of the sand, you need to have a chiseled jaw and young boyish charm. And if so, they will join you at a moment's notice, join into your Atreides cult. And actually, it is that it was pretty awesome getting them to join us for just no reason. I don't know. Dune here is a very cool adventure style game, so if you've heard of it and you've never checked it out, hopefully our little uh, dipping our toes into it today kind of gave you the foundation on which you can go and check it out yourself, play through it. Uh, it seems like there's quite a bit of fun exploration to have uh, here, and if you like adventure style games with like a hint of strategy, um, you may find some fun here, so it's probably worth checking out. Um, and hey, if you love these like gorgeous, classic uh, graphics and awesome Dunish music. This is yet another reason to check this game out. So I liked it. I liked it. I had fun with this game. Um, hopefully you guys had fun checking this game out with me. If you did, like the video, subscribe to the channel. I will be back in a couple days with a new video and a new game in my ongoing quest to play through the book 1001 Games Just Play Before You Die. So until then, my friends, take care of yourselves. If you find yourself on a desert planet, do build up a cult following. It will help you in the long term. Alright, otherwise, peace. You know, now that my mom finally agreed to follow me, I think we're going to take her on the ornithopter on like a wild adventure out of the castle. Let's just, for curiosity's sake, in fact, we're not even going to take the ornithopter. We're just going to wander into, what happens? What happens if you just wander off into the desert? And you just keep on going. You know what would be awesome is to see, oh, there's call worm. Ah, oh, sandworms. Sandworms are so cool. I love sandworms when I was a kid. I only knew of them through Beetlejuice. But sandworms are a thing in this game as well. And this series, this science fiction novel set and stuff. Sandworms. I would love to die at the the at the hands of a sandworm or the mouth, I guess. But I don't think we're going to see one. Oh, well. It was worth a shot. Oh, Paul, have you seen your face? You look so tired. You've been walking a lot in the desert lately, haven't you? Looks Yes, I have. Come on, where are the worms? That's not happening. Alright guys, forget it.